Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for watching and thanks for stopping by. Today we're gonna to be going over the Cogworks slide stop lever. And before we kind of jump into this video and start talking about that product, um, I gotta offer up or inject two small caveats before we jump into it. One, I'm in Washington state and it's pretty cold, damp and dreary out here as it normally is. So just to the right side of the camera, I got a small fire going on with some cedar and it seems to be popping a little bit. So if you hear some weird popping noises or some smoke billowing by, that's why. Uh, two, every time I do a video or if I'm doing a review on a pretty neat product that came out, I normally do my best to speak more so on the side of brevity while still offering up the most relevant and factual information as it pertains to the product so you guys can make a decent decision whether or not you actually want to go ahead and purchase this. Um, with this particular product, it's kind of hard to just kind of go into and just talk about what's simply on the surface without actually talking about a little bit of the theory about the problems that you may or may not have when it comes to actually overriding your slide stop lever. So this video might be a little bit longer than normal, but I thank you for your patience. And so when I first seen the, the Cogwork slide stop lever come out, I was naturally pretty intrigued because I definitely sit on the side of the campfire. Uh, of people who they want to take that last shot or they think there's that last shot to take and they go to fire the gun uh, you get that click and then you either go through a tap rack or if you sit or and subscribe to the school of thought to skip the tap and immediately go to the rack you see your guns empty then you go ahead and reload it and you kind of do what you have to do now <clears throat> specifically what that means is when you're talking about overriding your slide stop lever as soon as your gun comes out of the holster you index off that trigger guard and we start to roll into the apex of our presentation um, this meaty part of your hand right here, so the heel of your hand, will typically ride right on top of that lever. So kind of just to illustrate really what's happening right now is, uh, and this is in a safe direction if anyone's wondering, um, you go to want to take that last shot and you typically will get that click. And let me grab an empty mag. You go to take that last shot, let me back up here, and you get that click and you're like, ah. Oh, ah, it's out of ammo. You go and reload your gun and you kind of go back to doing what you're doing. Now that's been happening to me for so long with uh, a myriad of guns that it's just kind of become uh, a part of sh the shooting process, so to speak. So because of the fact that I'm constantly overriding this, I've developed and actually kind of built in certain habits to not necessarily circumvent the fact that I have been doing it, but to kind of give myself a little bit of uh, a little bit more of an insightful type of thought. So uh, before my gun went away, here's one of the habits that I've been doing. Um, a lot of guys press check, I don't really care, um, but because I would never, my gun would never lock open to the rear, a habit that I've seen a lot of people do is they would actually run their slide back just a little bit to actually see if they were still around in the chamber um, and they're not reholstering an empty gun. Um, that works, I don't really have a problem with it. I would normally just take a quick visual glance at the extractor on the Glock because it does have a loaded chamber indicator and just verify that they're still around in the chamber and make sure I still have some ammo in the magazine and then I'd go ahead and reholster. Well, that's a habit that I've actually been building into simply for the fact that I've been constantly overriding that lever along with everybody else. And it's not just with Glocks, I've been doing this with uh, SIGs, MPs. the only real striker fire gun that I've used to date were uh, the gun will lock open for me pretty consistently is the CZ P10C. Now when you kind of look at this and you, or when I look at this and I give it a little bit more of a critical objective thought and you're kind of discussing it, uh, looking for the best outcome that you could possibly take away from the fact that this, well it is a problem that's happening to you, you'll get a lot of people with their insightful answers of change your grip, in which case you're simply gonna, I simply roll my eyes, um, the proof's in the pudding. If you're firing the gun very well and you're dominating over the gun very well and you're controlling recoil very well, um, what's going to be your trade-off? You could drop your support hand down a little bit and then we can have that gun lock open for us. But now we're trading off uh, a function of the firearm, which is it locks open and now I'm sacrificing recoil control a whole lot to allow that function to work. So over the years, what I've really kind of determined for myself, there was a trade-off. Do I want my gun to lock open and if that was my answer and I wanted that to happen, I would need to drop my support hand on the gun a little bit, in which case I'm not going to control the recoil as well. If I want to dominate over the gun the best I can and have this thing shoot as flat as I possibly can, I'm going to end up getting way higher up on the bore line, in which case now where there was that trade-off and now the gun's not going to lock open to the rear for me. Uh, talking about that, now that opens up an entire new, new kind of debate where people are probably going to get into fist fights on the internet over. Um, what are you going to do with the gun before you reholster it? How vital is possibly doing a speed reload if you happen to have been in a fight? Blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. Um, as of today, my honest opinion is 
Um, I'm not too concerned about having to do a speed reload in any sort of a fight. That's not to say I'm not going to train or practice for worst case scenario. Uh, but that is to say the three years that I spent in Iraq, um, I have been shot at and I have never ever had to do a speed reload while I was in theater and I certainly don't expect to do one here. Not to say that I'm not going to continuously practice and train for him here. So in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to take the trade off of dominating over the gun the best I can versus uh, having my slide lock open on that last shot. So there's been that trade off for as long as I've been shooting Glocks and it kind of becomes a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now, more so than just the, uh, the superficial answer of change your grip, how important is the recoil versus having the gun lock open to the rear, um, I will say that uh, the gun not locking open definitely cost me out here. A um, couple examples, if I wanted to run an El Prez, um, you spin around, 222, reload, 222. <laughs> Well, my gun doesn't lock open to the rear, so what's that costing me right in there? It's costing me a shitload of time because I'm going 222, rack the slide, reinsert magazine, send the slide back home, 222. Another example is perhaps the fast drill. Um, two, two, reload four. Um, you can't do that very well when your slide doesn't lock open to the rear. So what ends up happening is if there's drills or aggregates or, or exercises, courses of fire, or whatever you want to call them that you actually want to do to see where you're at in your skill set, you're always going to kind of come up short a little bit simply because your gun's not going to lock open to the rear for you. So that kind of ends up building a habit in and of itself because I've seen a lot of people um, they will say, well, I override my slide stop lever, but I know the gun's empty, so I'm just going to stick a new magazine in it, or they'll run an El Prez, and they fired the two rounds, two rounds, two rounds. They didn't run their slide, and they're still around chambered, and they'll just stick in a new magazine, and then they'll fire the 222. And I get that, but that does take away a little bit from what that drill is actually tr we're trying to get out of that drill, which is fire the multiple target engagement, do a speed reload, and then work that back again from right to left. So we're constantly losing out whether or not you kind of want to see it superficially or kind of going to go into drills. We're definitely losing out and we're definitely being costed a whole lot of so time. So you guys can kind of see how this lever is going to work. Down here on the table, I got six magazines all with run around each. And we head down range a little bit. Sorry about the shakiness. Uh, that target right there, um, right at about between 25, 30 yards away, kind of close to a C zone size piece of steel. Uh, what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm just going to grab this uh, Glock 19, uh, chamber around, run the slide, fire one round. So I'm basically going to do one reload one for five repetitions, and we're going to see how the gun behaves um, with just a, a Vicker slide stop lever, kind of see what's been happening uh, ever since I've been overriding slide stop levers. Then we're going to repeat the process and we're going to do it with the other Glock with the Cogworks lever on. So, um, first school of thought, do you actually want to tap and then rack or do you immediately want to go into a rack, which is how confident are you that you seated your magazine properly? So, so one reload, one, and we'll see how the gun behaves. So we have it locked open to the rear, not once yet. One magazine left and last shot. So Vicker slide step lever, OEM slide stop lever. Um, I've used ghost slide stop levers. Uh, only the ones that come to the rear. I've never, I don't think I've, uh, I've never used a Spalding one, which I believe kind of moves to the front. So basically every time, gun does not lock open to the rear. Um, so you could actually do the click and run the slide like, oh, the gun's empty. Go ahead and stick a new magazine in it and go back to doing what you're doing. Um, what we're gonna do is set this back up and we'll do it with uh, the other Glock 19 with the Cogworks slide stop lever and see how that does. All right, so everything's set back up the exact same way we had it before. Uh, again, we're doing this uh, next uh, repetition or iteration with the Cogworks slide stop lever. Looking at this thing, it kind of reminds me of the arm from the uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda. I, I don't know why. So just one reload one, see how this gun locks open the rear for me. Again, same target down there, 25, 30-ish yards away, whatever. And uh, let's see how it does. Got a straight failure to fire on that one. Nothing to do with the lever. Yeah. 
All right, so gun locked open every single time. Uh, I think on that third round, there was a failure to fire. I'm um, running pretty cheap 124 ammo today, but every single time, gun locks open to the rear. Um, this gun's been locking open for to the rear for me every single time I shoot it. So um, this purpose-built lever saying that your gun will lock open to the rear if you happen to override the, the slide stop lever all the time, absolutely true. It works 100% of the time for me. Haven't had a single problem with it yet. The, uh, the only thing I kind of found weird so far, and we do have an empty gun right now, is if you do use your slide slot lever to reload and send the gun back home and put it back into battery, um, this little bit of distance right here from constantly running the lever here versus moving your thumb back up here uh, took a little bit of getting used to, and by a little bit I mean about 20 minutes of doing dry practice. Uh, 20 minutes and I, my thumb started picking it up right here no problem It just felt a little different at first because I've never felt a lever up here as high as this But all in all works 100% of the time So all in all all the claims that the uh, that Cogworks makes for this thing being pretty Badass it's actually pretty true it works for me 100% of the time definitely dig it um, Kind of touched up a little bit upon if you had that problem of constantly overriding the, the gun when it runs dry You're definitely adding deliberate steps to the shooting process based on what you want to do before you the gun goes back in the holster uh, A couple things left to talk about in here is the cons um, One big con is uh, if you happen to think this is ugly or not that's kind of subjective and up to you uh, Biggest one is is this thing retails for 45 bucks um, I kind of, the best of my recollection right now, I do believe that might be the most expensive uh, slide stop lever you can possibly buy for a Glock right now. I don't know of any lever that costs more than $45. You could typically pick up a new lever, like whether it be a Vickers or a Ghost for like 20, 25 bucks. They're not that much. This one's at 45 bucks. Uh, as far as holsters go, um, not many much problems at all right there. Um, my normal carry rig is a Berweedum in Gotham. Um, absolutely no problems there fits in there's no interference at all in the lever the only thing to take note a little bit if I do carry on the waistband I normally rock a safari land now on this particular one I have the Oregon Trail Defense uh, nub mod basically what that nub mod is is just an oversized latch on the safari land ALS and you really don't need it I just wanted to give it a try and it works pretty okay as soon as this gun comes out and let me kind of get see if I can get some daylight in there it's kind of hard to see the daylight. This lever is clearing that nub mod, nub mod by probably about a millimeter or two. Um, it's not rubbing, but it's definitely a tight clearance, but there has been no indication that this is ever going to get hung up when coming out of a safari land. Just know if you have a, uh, an Oregon Trail Defense or an OTD, uh, the nub mod, it might be a little bit close when you're drawn from a safari land. Other than that, every single holster I've had, there's been no clearance issues or anything like that. So all in all, a good buy. Um, is spending the $45 to you worth having your gun lock open to the rear without having to change your grip? I definitely think so. Um, having the gun lock open to the rear for me kind of opens up a whole new world of possibilities where I can actually see um, times that I would have had on certain drills if my gun had the ability to actually lock open the rear and I wasn't defeating it. So you can kind of open up a whole new world of possibilities, uh, try drills that you haven't really been able to do before um, because simply the way your gun was behaving because of what we were doing behind it. So all in all, I think it's definitely worth 45 bucks. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for your patience. I know this was a little bit of a long video and uh, I'll see you guys next time.